absolutely great. We sit back and we wait for help to come. We wait for technology to come back and save our lives. Because it's inconceivable that it won't, isn't it? I mean, if you admit that, you've got to admit that every single day of your life, in some form or other, you unconsciously walk yourself into a technology trap. Because that's the only way to live in the modern world. So you don't admit it. You say, oh, well, in this situation, we'll cope. But what happens when the effects become widespread, irreversible, devastating? What happens when what little resources you have to help you cope give up? Then what? Well, in all the disaster scenarios you read, what happens is that without power, technologically based civilization cracks up rapidly. Without enough auxiliary power, and most major cities don't have it, organization is impossible. It's every man for himself. Looting and arson follow. And in a city not prepared to be a fortress, supplies run out fast. And however frightening the thought of leaving your technological womb, sooner or later, there is nowhere to go but out, away from the danger. The minute you decide to move, you're on your own, in a way that no modern 20th century city dweller has ever been in his life. And then the traps begin to close. To start with, do you even know where to go in order to survive? Did you manage to get a map before you left? And if you did, how do you get out? Walk? Drive until you run out of fuel? Are you ahead of the millions of other people pouring down these roads trying to do just what you're trying to do? And if they catch up with you, have you got something they need? And if you have, can you protect yourself? Did you bring enough food and drink to last as long as necessary? And if you didn't, where will you get it? Steel? How far out will you have to push on until you're far enough out to be safe? And can you be sure that's far enough? And even if by some miracle you finally make it, do you know enough to recognize a place to stop when you see it? I mean, what does survival without technology look like? The Beano signs up. So, let's say that uh, finally, somewhere far out into the country, you come across a place that looks right. And let's say that you've had the good sense and the good luck to, to look for a farm. Because that's where food comes from, doesn't it? OK, so it's a farm, so you decide to stop. Has anybody got there first? Or are the owners still here? Because you're going to need shelter, and people don't give their homes away. They barricade themselves in. So, sooner or later, exhausted and desperate, you may have to make the decision to give up and die. Or to make somebody else give up and die because they won't accept you in their home voluntarily. And what? in your comfortable urban life has ever prepared you for that decision. OK, let's say by some miracle the place is empty and it's all yours. Is there enough food in the house? How long will it last? How will you cook it? Wood fires? Are you fit enough to chop all the wood you need before winter comes? If you're lucky, you've got livestock on the farm. Great. Meat. But can you slaughter and bleed and butcher an animal? OK, supposing you manage that, you've got enough meat to eat until you've eaten all the cows. But at least you could start running your farm. But it's a modern farm, remember? It's mechanised. There's a gasoline pump, but it's empty. So you can't use the tractor. What you need is a horse and cart. But when did you last see a horse and cart on a modern farm? And everything else here, the saw, the power drills, the light, the steriliser, the water supply, the sewage system, the hoist, the milking parlour, the pumps, and everything on this control panel demands the one thing you don't have. Electric power. Everything on this farm that you found doesn't work. The place is a trap. But there's nowhere else to go. The only way you're going to survive is if you find the one thing you need to keep on providing the food you've got to have. And you don't need the mechanised version of that thing. You need the kind people haven't used in a hundred years. Ah. You need that kind of plough. You're saved. Or are you? Because what it comes down to at this point is this. Can you use a plough? 
It's taken a series of miracles just to get you this far, and here you are with the biggest miracle of all, a plough and animals to pull it. So maybe after a few days of fumbling around with the harnesses and the bits and pieces, you manage to yoke up the oxen and plough the land. And then, and only then, can you say that you have successfully escaped the wreckage of technological civilization and lived off the land and survived, if you know how to use the furrow you plough. I mean, can you tell the difference between an ear of corn and a geranium seed? Do you know when to sow whatever it is you think it is? Do you know when to harvest it and eat the bit that you think isn't poisonous? I mean, it's no accident that the chain of events triggered off by that relay in the power station back there in Niagara Falls ends here with the plough. The relay itself doesn't matter. I mean, any one of a million things could fail and cause our complex civilization to collapse for an hour, for a day, however long. Because that's when you find out the extent to which you are reliant on technology and don't even know it. That's when you see that it's so interdependent, you take one thing away and the whole thing falls down and leaves you with nothing. Unless you can plough and survive and start the whole process off again from scratch. And it's no accident that to do that, you have to have a plough. Because it was the plough that triggered everything off a long way back in the past, after a different set of people also found out that their comfortable life was falling apart. 